It's time for House to Home with your host, Clyde Hazy, where you'll hear from local people who turn houses into homes all across the inland Northwest, and you'll learn how to do the same. House to Home is brought to you in part by River Ridge Hardware, Avista, and Rata Paint. Now, here's your host, Clyde Hazy. Welcome to another edition of House to Home. Joining me today is Tom Lenhardt, who's the energy efficient engineer with Avista. And they have some exciting things to share with you if you are a customer of theirs. But again, it's just overall great ideas. So Tom, what are we going to be talking about? Well, today we're at a manufactured home. Okay. Uh, the person has gone through and replaced their furnace and their water heater. Yes. But we wanted to show what would happen when we audited the home and found out if there were any other issues that we needed to address while we're here helping this uh, person who owns the home. Well, when you do this audit, again, a lot of things do take place, folks, and you need to understand they do seal up the home, they bring air into it, they evaluate it from the inside outward and from the outside inward, right? That's right. We're going to be showing you a blower door which goes in one of your doorways and it causes the house to simulate a 20 mile an hour wind on the outside of the wow. home. And so once we do that, we'll be able to go around with an infrared camera and see where the air is leaking in the home. Today we're really lucky because there's about a 20 degree Fahrenheit difference right. between the outside and the inside temperature. So that lets us see what's happening. So we'll look around doors, windows, uh, light fixtures and see what really happens when this goes Well, you know, one of the things we're going to be taking a look at is the thermostat. She has bumped it up a little bit. And you know why, folks? because she's cool in there, even when the heat is on this late in the spring. But we're gonna find out maybe the efficiency or the extra drafts are causing her problem. So, Tom, are you ready to start really tearing into this and begin to identify it? Let's go take a look. Let's go. Tom, we're looking at the thermostat that has been set right now at 75 degrees, and it's really quite nice outside. It's not a cold, cold day, is it? Yeah, I think a, a good thing to remember about your thermostat, if, if you find yourself pushing that thermostat up in the winter when it's very cold and then bringing it back down as the weather becomes more temperate right you may already have discovered you got a problem with your home well you know we're always trying to adjust it by this thermostat and really the thermostat is not the real big item with the heating it's just the item to make us feel more comfortable and that's what we are finding out in this home there's a little bit of drafts here and there and so forth so maybe we can help them bring their bills down by the correction of some of those items and that'll affect the thermostat right yeah it's that's absolutely true and um so what we would do in an audit with uh, the homeowner is go over the thermostat. This is a programmable thermostat. Right. We would talk about how they could use it to help themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, incentives for homeowners for smart stats. They can look at what the temperature is outside and make other decisions for them. Uh, so we'll, we'll go over the thermostat and try to help them know exactly how to use it before we leave. Right. Well, she's made the right adjustments here. She has an adjustable thermostat and, of course, at night you can have it turned off so you're not heating it up and so forth. But she, she's actually on the right step right now. She is. Uh, our, our concern, though, is that she does have to turn it up higher than Needed. we would think that she would want right. to when it's very cold outside, which may indicate that there's some problem we haven't found yet. Well. Let's just start looking around and see what else we can find, Tom. All right. We can begin to see how that vent should be allowing some cold air, because that's venting out. Right? That's correct. All the vents that just vent to the outside are probably going to have cold air pulled in through them. Right. So we can expect that. What you don't necessarily expect in this particular case is a seam in the house, which we have right here, pulling in cold air from the outside. You can actually see the flow of the air coming into this room. There's just no insulation at that particular spot and that's maybe why it's happening? Well, there may be insulation, but it's not it's not caulked or tied off so yep. that no air can come in right. at that particular spot. And uh, there are a few places around the house that's like this, but it's, it's kind of a normal thing. You right. just have to look and see where are those. If we were doing an, a regular um, audit, we would be carrying some uh, some tape with us, some blue, yeah, blue tape, some and we would put a sticker down there saying this, right. this whole length needs right. to be fixed up. And so that's that's what we do during the audit. So if you came in and your house was being audited and you saw seven or ten places where somebody had right. put blue, that's the places where we see the things okay. coming out. And it comes from everywhere. And without this this machine here, 
This gun, you can't never, you would never know that. Not here, but we can look a little bit if we go to one of the doors and see where you can actually feel it, even though you, you wouldn't need this. Well, we're camera. gonna go to the doggy door where you can actually hear it. Okay, let's do it. Let's go in. You know what, Tom, I was just mentioning, here's the old doggy door that's been sealed off, but I can actually hear it running through there. Yeah, we can, we can also hear it at the door itself, and the more I push right. on it, the more I can make that whine go up. But I think what's important here is we think we've done a good job whenever we just shut something off. Right. But this isn't insulated, and even though it was covered, it, you can still see all of the air coming through at that particular You know, point. again, by doing these audits, you're going to find out these spots, and there's a good one, because we all have doggy doors, it seems like, to some degree. That's true. Look at the bottom of this, oh, yeah. where you see the, the door. flow of the air actually coming through. Uh, the bottom of that seam so that's not the doggy door anymore that's the seam at the bottom of the house so that could be that could be fixed by lifting up that cove base right and and just caulking right along that edge right there bit by bit we're going to take care of these correct okay you know tom here's another back door and you know i was just feeling this there's a cold draft literally a draft coming through here yeah clyde this is a case where if you were to pull this right. trim off you would find that there was never any insulation put between the door and the wall over right here the door and, casing right and so the solution in this particular case is to pull off the casing right use an expanding foam all the way around the door and then put the casing back on and you won't have this now we're only uh imitating a 20 mile an hour wind really outside so the fact that it's only about 20 degrees difference now outside between the inside, right. the fact that you can feel it. Oh, it's cold. That, that means that on a normal day, there's mm -hmm. a lot of losses in this particular area. Well, and we just need to identify around doorways and if it has not uh, been foamed, it, it's gonna leak. And this is not gonna hold a, look at that. It's not gonna hold the moisture. This is another good place to talk about. If you have pets in your home, uh, and you've got a warm spot on the floor or a warm spot near something on the wall, you may find your pet laying on that warm spot, or you may find them staying away from the cold area. And Works so, both ways. And so you can start to see, oh, can I use this a little bit as a detective mode to right. say, where where do the, my family and my pets tell me where I shouldn't be? <laughs> right. And those might be the places where you have problems. Great indicator. You know, here again, the outlet of the stack going up through the ceiling, it, it's just allowing all that colder to come back in, right? Yeah, that's right, Clyde. This is a, a freestanding wood stove. Right, uh, and right. And so we have to tell people who are gonna get an audit to be very careful and clean these out real well because we know we're gonna be pulling some air in around that's them. That's correct. But what, it, what this tells us is that there's a little bit more air than we would even expect it to be to be in right. that particular Well, they area. can actually uh, adjust the damper for the time of the year, too. That's true. Okay. Tom, here's a register in the office here, and there is, it's all cold air coming out of the register. We have, we said we we're gonna research it, right? Correct. Why is that happening? Well, obviously there's possibly a break in the ductwork underneath the house that's allowing right. us to pull cold air in from the crawl space. And so since the furnace is shut off, the right. fact that we're seeing this cold of an air, which is roughly the same temperature as what we're getting outside, means that there may be a break there. So it's something we have to investigate further. What's also interesting is the room next to us. Yeah, within 10 feet. Isn't quite, it doesn't have quite as much uh, cold, but it has more air being pulled through. Right. So I'm not sure. And then there's one other thing to look here, Clyde. Look at the edge of that wall space. Right. So there must be a little bit of a loss coming on that wall edge too. Yeah. Uh, so those are both things that we would look at and tape if we were here on an audit. Okay. Well, again, we need to look at the registers. They're not always right. They're not functioning properly is what I'm saying. That's correct. There, okay. We need to do more research. Investigation and find out what the real problem is. I agree. Okay. Okay. If you see this, Clyde, here yes. in the info, uh, graph, you'll see the thermography shows that this has even more cold air coming out of it than the other one. So it could indicate that this is closer to the leak. Uh, and so we'll just put that in our notes and whoever goes under the house to try to check what's going on with the ductwork can. So we do need to find out there is definitely possibility of some problems with the ductwork and that's where our heat registers are not showing 
the correct flow. That's, there shouldn't there shouldn't be that much cold air. That's correct. Okay. We've been looking at the inside of the home of air coming in. Now we're on the outside. So let's begin out here. I was just looking at this. This is a TV cable brought in. Correct. Was it properly sealed? I don't know. It's well, beginning to be. Every good audit is going to have the auditor going around the outside of the house looking at every penetration right. through the house. That actually looks sealed up pretty good. But if I was auditing this, I would note that. I right. would note that uh, light up there. And when I was doing my blower door, I might look up and make sure I'm not getting air in around something. I can see the wire is actually the popping right. out there a little bit. So you just, you just make notes to say, I've, I've got to look here, 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 and here when I go around. But this particular house, uh, from the side of walls where right. things are going through looks pretty good in this particular case. The skirting down here is is really allowing air to flow through. Yeah, that's correct. A lot of people think that they need to p just close off their that's crawl space true. and that would just cause smells and all kinds of things. Right. Now it should be closed off so that animals and everything else can't get in, but you still need to allow air through so that the area can stay dry. In most cases, you'll put down a plastic uh, on the ground after you've dug out and then a vapor barrier correct a vapor barrier and then you allow air to flow through and what you do is insulate the floor of the home which is actually yeah. from about here on up to here that's correct so that's the proper way to do the work so that you're you're really stopping the heat at the floor instead of right. thinking you can block it off from the outside. well that's one of the things we noticed inside we had some registers that didn't quite seem to be registering correctly correct and so we need to take a look at that underneath or investigate it, right? That's right. That would be a note that the auditor would give and then we would further investigate that. Well, the other thing is we noticed that inside the home they have a wood stove that was added afterwards. They had to add additional venting and I know you can't see it clear right now, but we got a, a vent here. They're just allowing cold air to come in right. and, and that needs to be controlled. Yeah, it, it was a... It was a manufactured home, so it's right. relatively it's an tight. Yep. And they decided to put a wood stove in, so they needed to have a place to draw the air for the wood burning. Right. And so they put this in. Unfortunately, for this particular customer, she no longer uses wood stove right. or uses any of that. So now it just becomes more penetrations that she didn't need right. in her home. And the auditors should be going around saying, hmm, what are we using this for? Is this good for you to have? Right. Is there a change we could make that might help you a little bit? Well, you know, what we're actually pointing out, folks, is that you need to investigate the whole exterior of the home. Everything from the eaves down to the ground. I mean, all over. I mean, it's surprising where leaks do take place, right, Tom? That's right. So with a audit, you're going to begin to find some of these things that need to be looked at and begin to address them. And now is the time of the year that you can really get by by uh, tearing off that trim around the edges and repairing it, right? And if you can't afford an audit yet, I would say watch some of our videos and see yeah. if you can go around and do some of this stuff yourself. Because let's, let's be honest, you live in the place, yep. you know where it's comfortable, where it isn't comfortable. Maybe start tracking stuff down one thing at a time. Right. Well, you pointed out where the cats and the dogs may lay, maybe in a cool spot in the summertime, means there's air running in. Or maybe in the wintertime, it's a different spot. So, you know, your animals actually will tell you a lot too. Yeah, this is a spot, uh, Clyde, where I would say um, an ounce of prevention yes. is worth a pound of cure. So, and uh, we have make a sure. spot up here then, Tom. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay, there is an issue. There's a... <laughs> all right. So we, we can fill that all up really well. And here you can start to see as this comes off that we've got a board going down that was used as a spacer. I want to talk about a couple of things. This is my gun. And my since I help a lot of people right. do this work, right. I bought a professional one and it's about $70 for the handle, and then you buy cans that you slip on here. But you can go to the, you can go to Big Box sure. or any, right. any hardware store and buy the same stuff. And when you use this, the best thing to do is to fill it and leave it for four hours or so. Let okay. it just completely set up. Then you can take a razor blade down the outside edge and cut it before you or put your trim. The front before Clean you put your trim back on. So no big deal if you don't want to go buy a professional one, mm -hmm. but you're going to love doing this so much 
that you're gonna go get yourself a professional one and help all your neighbors do it too. What? I have this set right now to do a super fine little spray. So I can just keep going down this thing and it just is really a fine small little but it's definitely going to stop the air it, leaking it around the edges, right? It'll go right in there and do that. Job. Now, is it going to, it will uh, grow a little bit as it dries, right? It does. And this won't grow enough for us to not be able to put anything right. on it. That'll be, this will probably be fine because we can just compress it when we push that. And if we want to make it smoother, we can just peel it off with a knife. Yeah. Uh, that's if you're using a, if you're using a big guy, it's so hard to get it all right. in there, and yeah. its speed that it comes out is not regulated. Now I can turn mine up a little bit and test here and get a little big bigger shot, so that when we need to, we can fill. Okay, you're filling the whole void. Now. This product is going to last forever, right, Tom? Yeah. I mean, fun. it's not going to disappear or anything else. Nope. You know, you can tell that this door was cut in after the home was built. So that's why we have this space. <coughs> and what I'm doing right now is doing the backside <coughs> because I really want the gap filled, but I'll come okay. back and do the front side too. And you can see my gap's getting a little smaller right. here. Right. You know, by doing little things like this on a week, th this is a great weekend project. So this time of the year for us here today is in the summertime, but it would give you a chance. You can take this apart. You're not going to feel the cold air coming through, but you're going to see where it's coming. And that is the point that now, this whether, time of the year do that, right? Whether you're using this or you use one right. of these from the hardware store, just make sure you have keep something you can throw away that you keep cleaning the tip off with while you're doing your work. So really, that's what that's really all we're talking about mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for doing this. So we'll uh, do we've got two doors to do here that weren't done. Right. So we'll do those and we'll we'll give you an idea after we're done, we'll redo this blower door test where we had done before. And we shouldn't see all the air coming through. Hopefully not. <laughs> that sounds good. So, well, Tom, uh, just keep on going. <laughs> okay, I'll keep working. Take a look right straight through here. And you could watch your dog outside if you wanted to. <laughs> now this is hidden. Most people never find these things because if they never pull their trim off, right. they, they would never see it. But again, here's an area where we were talking about, this is why you want to cut up the edge of your trim so you don't pull paint off when you do it. This is an example of pulling paint off. Fortunately for me, this happened before we got here. But still, that's that's what happens if you just pull the trim off without cutting it. We about have this guy filled up. And it's going pretty fast because it's a nice, it's a perfect size hole. Allows us to get the nose of this device in. Tom, we have just completed going through a energy evaluation on this particular home here. And Avista really has some great programs available for you folks. But Tom, what were the end results here? Well, we had come in and as you see in the video, filled up gaps around the doors, uh, closed off a doggy door that used to be wide open, closed off an entrance to the fireplace. And then uh, our technician ran another blower door test and we found that we drastically reduce the amount of losses here. So hopefully this owner will see a lot l lower use of uh, right. energy during the heating season to keep this house warm. Well, you know, and even in during the summertime, folks, you can even reduce that energy bill too by correcting some of these issues, allowing air to flow through when it's cooler outside. But again, identify what the needs are gonna be for the time of the year. That's true. When you fix the envelope or the shell of a home, right. you're gonna help yourself both in the summer and the winter. And so uh, we're, we're not like Hawaii here where it stays <laughs> right. one temperature all the time. Right. Well, what you're gonna find folks is that little weekend projects and little ideas that you may have where there's some leakage we found some of them are bigger than we thought, right? <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> Over true. the doors, but go in and deal with these things for weekend projects. And by doing this, you're gonna save energy 
and you're going to start transitioning your house to a beautiful home and enjoy it and be able to have the heat on and the cooling on. If you don't know how to do these things, come to MayaVista.com and view some of these videos just like this one that will help you get your house turned into a home. Love it, Tom. Thank you again. Thanks Avista so much. Vista's done a great job. Thank you again. Thanks for watching. House to Home is produced in Spokane, Washington by SpokaneTalksMedia.com, which is solely responsible for its content. House to Home is sponsored in part by our friends at Rada Paint, River Ridge Hardware, and Avista. Ask Clyde a question, recommend a guest, or hear this program again on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or SpokaneTalksMedia.com.